This is Liminal Land. It's a recent analog horror series about an amusement park located in Lake Valley, New Mexico. With anomalous properties. The park was designed to push the boundaries of what immersive entertainment is. With experimental coasters and rides, a multi-leveled underground water park, and a massive sprawling underground suburbia. Liminal Land became the biggest destination for families across the 80s. But of course, not everything is always as it seems. Even though it is still brand new, Liminal Land is one of the most intriguing new analog horror series to hit the internet in recent years. Created by YouTubers Nexpo and Nick Crawley, it tells a story in a hyper-creative way, bridging multiple forms of media and internet horror, from analog to alternative reality and even liminal spaces. The story of Liminal Land is told to us 34 years after its closure, following some terrible incident unknown to us that took place in 1989, the park was shut down suddenly and indefinitely. And it is told through archived videotapes, old classified documents, and photographs recovered by the Liminal Land Archival Committee, a mysterious entity who's in the works of retrieving and archiving the history of the park through their main website visit liminalland.net and with everything that is given to us here the story of liminal land begins to unfold one of the first things we are introduced to on the site are liminal land's famous attractions that brought people in from all over the states the hall of walls a strangely familiar location and liminal land's signature maze experience the revered paradise playrooms a vast playhouse served for children to get lost in. Subliminal Land, an underground water park. The Laugh Track, a ride that invokes uncontrolled laughter during its run. Centrifuge, rumored to hold up to a hundred riders at a time. The Skyliner, Liminal Land's reverse freefall. Chrysanthemum. Liminal Land Signature Spinner Serpentine A snake-like towering coaster with extreme peaks, drops, and loops The Fun House A clown maze experience of sorts to get lost in An Invader Cave Liminal Land's transit system connecting various areas at a park We also see that besides its many attractions Liminal Land was far more than just an amusement park because it had full accommodations for its customers to stay within liminal land for however long they needed to. Through their home project or the holistic and opportune mutual experience, a sprawling underground suburbia located right underneath the park, built to house incoming park visitors and act as liminal land's only in-park hotel offered to guests, many of whom felt overwhelmingly comfortable while inside due to its illusory nature. Quick family vacations often turned into extended and even permanent stays, and for many, Liminal Land Park had indefinitely become home. At its peak, home contained around 10,000 concurrent operational rooms, spread out over a handful of square miles underground. In fact, home was so successful that Sharon, Liminal Land's parent company, began selling units within home in 1981 fulfilling their goal of keeping their guests on park grounds for as long as humanly possible. We then are given a map of the Lake Valley, where we see the area size of Liminal Land Park and the true size of home, which expands far beyond the map area, which obviously seems like something that would be too large and too expansive to be built by anyone. Located under home is Subliminal Land, one of the major attractions of Liminal Land and similar to home, it too is a vastly expansive complex of pool rooms, 
On his advertisement flyer, it reads, A whole new world underneath your feet. Three years after Liminal Land changed the face of Lake Valley, Sharon Corporation has emerged with yet another project bound to fascinate park visitors. A multi-thousand square foot underground complex spanning 36 floors vertically downwards is now available to explore completely at your leisure. Subliminal land is considered to be just as big if not bigger than home. In fact, it is hinted at that not even the park itself knows the limits of these infinite underground complexes. Subliminal land carries rooms within rooms of irregular pools with unique shapes and architecture. Each pool is seemingly connected to every other one on each floor. Visitors are recommended to venture deeper into subliminal land by venturing into its maze-like structure utilizing a system of water slides to travel between the 36 floors. As the deeper you go, the less crowds you encounter. Floor B10 and beyond are nearly empty due to their sheer size. Not just that, but the entire indoor structure is completely and naturally heated, warmed by a quote, the remnants of Lake Valley's dormant test sites. Given the city's rich history and diligence in investing in energy infrastructure, Lake Valley Observations has donated their prior complex to benefit Sharon's vision of bringing humanity the most unique theme park experience in the world today. Lake Valley Observations. Interesting name. Liminal Land's other somewhat similar maze-like attraction is their Hall of Walls. In an old 1978 summer pamphlet, it reads, The staple of liminal land is back for the summer season with a brand new look. The freshly painted gray walls blend together more than ever in what the Lake Valley Times calls the most immersive escape room man has ever built. Featuring its signature 800,000 square foot megastructure, the Hall of Walls offers an experience like no other where guests can lose themselves every time. Okay, so from the get-go, and just by reading some attractions and features of the park, we can already see that something quite unnatural is taking place here. It seems like Liminal Land was built by the Sharon Corporation at a very strategic location. A location that was once a complex owned by a Lake Valley Observations. A location with the access into a very familiar complex of yellow-tinted maze-like hallways endless rooms and dorms, and a labyrinth of pool rooms that go on with no end. Liminal Land was built right on top of a gateway of sorts into another dimension, an infinite backrooms-like dimension that is being used by Sharon to profit from, using this infinite space as accommodations and fun attractions for their visitors. Looking deeper into the site, and digging deeper into the archives, we find a 1973 photograph of Lake Valley observations before it was purchased by Sharon. Recovered image potentially, awaiting confirmation from the site of what was once the home of Lake Valley observation. This photograph was likely taken by staff members of Sharon surveying the land for purchase before its eventual renovation into subliminal land. And we also find this, preliminal land photos of Lake Valley, Colorized, one of the last surviving images of Lake Valley observations, the site of what would one day become liminal land. Within the building shown, clean energy was produced and used in various regions across the country. Directly beneath this facility sat their enormous underground housing development, which would later be repurposed into home. These images show the early days of Lake Valley, years before they would begin their clean energy initiative. The town was small remote and rarely visited, which made it the perfect place to build their power plant. Recovered photos from inside Lake Valley observations. The site was once home to an esteemed 7,000 employees at its peak, though very few photographs remain. A photograph taken inside one of the washrooms in the underground portions of the energy facility. The white tide walls would serve as inspiration for the decor of subliminal land. In some instances, the tiles did not need to be replaced. The only known image taken of the hub, the main energy sector of Lake Valley observations, 
Due to the constant reactions happening inside, entering this room often meant death in under an hour. The hub would eventually be retrofitted into the final floor of Subliminal Land, which made it one of the most highly sought after locations in the entire park. Extremely interesting. It seems like years before Sharon would be interested in buying the land, another corporation known as Lake Valley Observations was harnessing this complex zone to not only house its 7,000 employees in what would later be home, but also to produce clean energy from a source known as the hub. A large structure emanating intense energy that merely entering the room often meant death within an hour. Meaning the natural heating we have at subliminal land comes from this heating core. But why is it still active? And why is it one of the most highly sought after locations in the entire park? As we continue to look even deeper into the archives, we find that the park was perhaps just as controversial and dangerous as it was famous and beloved. We find old archived videos uploaded to the liminal land official YouTube channel. The first one being a recorded LVVT Channel 5 1988 sign-off of missing persons in the Lake Valley area. The description reads, Archived anthem and sign-off of LVVT Channel 5 in Lake Valley, New Mexico. Contrary to the small population size of Lake Valley, the high number of missing persons cases is likely attributed to the numerous incidents that took place within nearby Liminal Land Park. The missing persons are Margaret Jacobson Frank Strother Angie Munoz Sherry Travis Mark Ardones Herman Reed Lisa Stanton Roger Elliott and Angela Hawthorne Following this missing person's case, we find another archived video. This time, it is a police investigation report about a liminal land anomaly. The description reads, Recovered investigation tape detailed strange occurrences surrounding something nicknamed the liminal land anomaly. We have an idea of what this ride could be. However, it is still mostly ambiguous. New Mexico State Police Exhibit C3-01 the anomaly within liminal land. In recent months, the New Mexico State Police has been made aware of an anomalous attraction at Liminal Land Park. The ride is believed to be tied to numerous cases of facial deformity, as noted by Lake Valley Regional Hospital. LVVT has declined to cover these cases on local television, as visual depictions are not suitable for a general audience. We hope this record will serve as a suitable and alternative case study for the Liminal Land Anomaly. Brick Ackerman, 42. Brick visited Liminal Land in July of 1988. He has a wife and three children. He allegedly snuck away from his family to ride the Liminal Land Anomaly alone. This photograph was the last time his family saw him alive. The following photo is an illustration of his facial structure after writing the Liminal Land Anomaly. Brick's cause of death remains under investigation until further notice. Lena Sorensen, 44. Lena brought her first grade class to Liminal Land in the winter of 1984. While there, Lena decided to take the children to the park's Paradise Playrooms. Lena remained with the children for seven minutes before she suddenly left the building through the rear exit. The children were left alone for eight hours and never noticed she left. Lena's body was discovered in a patch of dirt behind the Liminal Land anomaly. The following photo is an illustration of her facial structure after her body was recovered. Lake 
Valley Police refuses to elaborate on their findings from the crime scene. Maria Ramos, 48. Maria visited Limonalot alone in November of 1982. Maria allegedly rode the wheel before making her way to the Liminal Land Anomaly. That day, the Liminal Land Anomaly was reportedly closed for repair. Park employees recall seeing a woman near the ride's controls, yet did nothing to question or stop her. Shortly after, the ride reportedly engaged with the woman in the furthest rail car to the rear. The Liminal Land Anomaly was allegedly closed due to a faulty failsafe, causing the ride to run multiple times per session. That day, the ride ran for 26 minutes, non-stop. The following photo is an illustration of Maria's facial structure after the ride was brought under control. Maria's incident marks the first known death by the Liminal Land Anomaly. The investigation by the New Mexico State Police is ongoing. It appears that this enigmatic ride possesses a compelling pull, irresistibly attracting its victims. The first individual, Rick, abandoned his family to get on the ride. The second, Lisa, discarded her entire first grade class to get on the ride. And even though the ride was undergoing repairs, this did not stop the third victim, Maria, whom after a prolonged ride due to failure to stop, her deformities looked severely worse than any other. Whatever this anomaly is, it has an effect on its users, distorting their faces into permanent smiles before killing them and discarding their bodies. Outside of this tape, no mentions of this anomalous ride is ever found on a website. Our third video is a Sharon Corp training video course for its new employees, specifically a training video for those working in the home section of the park. The video goes on to explain what home is and what it is used for. The video then goes through a training exercise where employees are meant to select any discrepancies, which here are all the windows and doors, which are meant to be blocked off or removed to not cause, quote, premature leave for guests. We then see a case study, a found footage tape that serves as an example in showcasing how improper containment measures lead to anomalous occurrences for home residents. The found footage follows an anonymous person who may either be a resident of home or an employee, and due to improper containment, they find themselves outside of the area under Sharon control. They walk around this underground neighborhood before making their way into a home. and emerging on the other side. They keep on exploring these hallways until they come across a blocked door with a bright red light coming out of it. Once they step closer, they hear this. After being spooked, our cameraman starts running, going deeper into the unknown areas of home and emerging into a backrooms like maze, before finally succumbing into a mysterious end, somewhere deep in the maze. Interestingly enough, a letter can be found within the archives about this exact situation. The letter is titled, The Sound in C-Block. I'm having trouble figuring out how to approach Dr. S about this but this is getting seriously out of hand. 
We cannot keep guys on payroll for longer than a few weeks before they walk off. I'm not sure if it's a pay discrepancy or what, but this is seriously beginning to affect our bottom line. Home is a fucking mess. It's become a colossal shithole ever since Dr. S decided to sell units for permanent stays. All this man cares about is money, 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 and the residents don't care. They sit in their rooms, living like shit, their trash is everywhere and it stinks. How am I supposed to hire any decent talent if their first day on a job is cleaning up the mess the last team abandoned? We either need to shut off sections of home or figure out some way to get more people in here fast. I can't keep pulling these overnights alone. Not like this. It's messing with me bad. I haven't told anyone, but two nights ago I heard something down the hallway inside C Block. I'm not sure if it was because I was up for 22 hours straight, again, but it sounded so fucking real. It was akin to a child's scream, this disturbing blood curling scream followed by what I could only describe as a... I know it sounds ridiculous, underground, but dear god, it hasn't left my mind since. We need more guys, I'm overworked, I'm tired, and if things don't change, I'm walking off just like the others, because fuck this. It seems like there is something deep within home, a blocked off zone named C Block, where extremely disturbing sounds and screams can be heard. A third investigation tape is found within the archived. This one is called Mommy's Friend. Case file 052087. Mommy's Friend. The New Mexico State Police continues their investigation into strange activity happening around Lake Valley, New Mexico. Last week, Detectives received a tip directing them to the Munoz residence. Allegedly, Sofia Munoz has been acting increasingly erratic since her daughter disappeared under unknown circumstances. Sofia Munoz, age 54. Sofia Munoz alleges that her daughter was last seen in her care at 504 Dorado Street. According to her testimony, she ran away from home in the dead of the night. During the incident, Sofia alleges that she was asleep in her bed and heard not a single sound to wake her. Detectives have been given no reason to suspect that Sofia Munoz is lying. Mommy's friend, drawn by Angie. This is my mommy. Mommy takes me everywhere. Mommy takes me to Lemon Land. I was so exited. Mommy made me sad. Mommy takes me in this house. Inside there were more houses. Mommy looked. Mommy said she was looking for a friend. Follow me. It's okay.
inside was Amami's friend. Mommy's friend. reason to believe that Sofia Monos was involved in the disappearance of her daughter, Angie. If you have information regarding Sofia Monos or her daughter, please call. A horned man inside home, and a sound in C-Block. Interestingly enough, on the Visit Liminal Land site, there's one section of the homepage that is password protected. The section is called Intervention. Currently the password has been changed and it is unknown, but before there was a password that did work. If you typed Rite of Passage, you get this screen with this single picture. If you don't know what this entity is, this is known as Moloch, a bloodthirsty deity from the Hebrew Bible which was worshipped in ancient times by child sacrifice. Just what does an ancient pagan god have to do with liminal land? Come to look into it a bit further. The Minotaur, another bullheaded half-man half-beast myth from antiquity, who also has a taste for human flesh and more specifically was believed to live in a labyrinth within the island of Crete an elaborate and complex maze specifically designed by the mythical architect Daedalus. The labyrinth was designed to be nearly impossible to navigate, with numerous twisting corridors, dead ends, and hidden passages. Its purpose was to confine and trap anyone who entered it, including of course the Minotaur itself, making it extremely challenging to find a way out. It was a puzzle intended to keep the Minotaur isolated and prevent its escape. According to the myth, the Labyrinth was an architectural marvel, incorporating intricate designs and complex architecture. Some descriptions suggest that it had high walls, while others portray it as an underground maze. The Labyrinth was said to be vast, with multiple levels and chambers, creating a sense of disorientation and confusion for those who entered it sounds extremely familiar with what we're dealing with under liminal land. An infinite labyrinth of multiple levels, whom within lives a horned entity who feeds on child sacrifice and human flesh. Making a sound in C-Block, sounds of humans being sacrificed, it is demonic deity. This also raises questions about the hub. What if the hub isn't some nuclear power plant? but instead a portal into whatever hellscape this deity is from. What if the never-ending heating that comes out of this hub is coming straight out of hell itself? And what if the way to keep this hub going is by a steady stream of human and child sacrifice? What if Lake Valley observations, after discovering this fact, use this never-ending source of energy to power Lake Valley and house their employees in this labyrinth? And now, thanks to Liminal Land, the Labyrinth always has enough people wandering around, getting lost, and being drawn to this hub to keep it going on forever. The same way Sofia Munoz was drawn to C-Block and gave away her daughter as sacrifice. I suspect that whatever happened in 1989 to cause the park to shut down had something to do with this. On the site it says, Unfortunately, on May 20th, 1989, Liminal Land's day of reckoning had come. That night, the park was rapidly and indefinitely shut down, with no concrete reason ever being given. The remains of those present on that fateful night are rumored to remain exactly where they were last seen. Although nobody really knows for sure, theme park preservationists are keen to keep the spirit of Liminal Land alive, however. There has been nothing like it for decades. 
and probably never will. Liminal Land is still a new and an ongoing series, and there are still many things that I have not included in this video to let you do your own exploration and research. There are still many questions left unanswered. A definitive answer on what is in C block, and how does that correlate with the hub? What is the true nature of the home complex and subliminal land? What exactly is the liminal land anomaly? And why did Sharon even build the park in the first place? Liminal Land has been one of the most refreshing analog horror series that I have encountered in a while. And the fact that it was made by two YouTubers who are among those who have inspired me the most, it's a pleasure to cover it on this channel. I hope you've enjoyed your stay, and I will see you very soon.